Good morning, Exodus Harvest Center Church. This is Pastor Remy Senior. How y'all doing this morning? I hope everybody is excited to hear the word of God. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we give praise, we, we give honor, we give glory, and we give thanks to you, God, on this morning, God. We bless your holy name, God, this morning. We praise and we worship only you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us, blessing us. We thank you for all your protection, Lord, all through the night, all through the day, God. And we love you, Jesus. Father, as I come before your people this morning, I pray that you shed me down completely. None of me, but all of you, God. Have your way, Jesus. Decrease me completely and increase in me. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Teach your word, Holy Spirit. With clarity, Holy Spirit. For a child of God, you understand the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Anybody excited about Jesus? I'm excited about Jesus. I am excited about what Jesus is about to do in my life this morning, in your life this morning, in the world life this morning. Let's get back to Hebrew chapter 3, part 4, I think part 4, part 5, dealing with resting in God, resting in God. Let's start at verse 12, pick up from last week, verse 12, Hebrew 3, verse 12. Be careful then, dear brothers and sisters, make sure that your own hearts are not evil and unbelieving, turning you away from the living God. Let's stop there for one second. Make sure your hearts ain't evil. Turn it your way for the living God. Make sure that your heart, your heart, don't become unbelieving. Keep your heart on God. Keep your mind on God. Focus on Jesus. Don't focus on what's going on in this world. Don't focus on what you can't control. Focus on Jesus Christ. Focus on Jesus. He has done all the work for you. Jesus will protect you. He will take care of you. And he will heal you if you ever get sick. He will provide for you whatever you need during this time. During a crisis, focus on Jesus. He that keep his mind on Jesus will stay in perfect peace. Let's keep our mind on Jesus. Then our heart won't become unbelieving like the Israelites did. The Israelites took their mind off Jesus. And their heart became hardened to God. And they became unbelieving and evil entered into their hearts. And when the evil come into your heart, you take your mind off Jesus. What bring evil into your heart? When you harden your heart against the word of God, against the voice of God, and when you start worrying about things that you can't control, the Bible tells us in Philippians 4.6, don't worry about nothing, but pray about everything. If I don't worry about nothing, and I pray about everything, and I keep my mind on Jesus, my heart will never harden against the word of God. It will never harden against the voice of God. We are living in a time when people don't even know what they're going to get their next meal. 
So many people are unemployed. 30 million people plus. In this time, in, in, in this time, please don't turn away from the living God. Please come close to God. Please draw nigh to God in this season. And I guarantee you, God will provide for you. God will take care of you. And he will meet every need you ever need if you don't harden your heart against God. If you don't turn against God. If you don't reject God. God is a patient God. He's a loving God. He's a merciful God. He's a God that loves you more than you can ever imagine. Let's go to verse 14. For if we are faithful to the end, trusting God just as firmly as when we first believed God. We will share in all that belongs to God. I just told you, if you trust God, and you stay faithful to God, you will never have to worry about anything. He will supply all your needs. He will supply every need you ever me. God will take care of you, your family, and every need that you need if you trust Him. Remember, remember what He it says. Today, when you hear when you hear His voice, don't harden your heart as Israel did when they rebel. Don't be like the Israelite when they came out of Egypt, when they came out of slavery. For 40 years, they hardened their heart against God. And God is so patient, he is so faithful, God still took care of them for 40 years. And they hardened their heart. And their heart became unbelieving in the living God. They test God. They turn away from God. They reject God. And God still fed them for 40 years. He still took care of them for 40 years. He never turned away from them. He doing the same thing in the 21st century church. If you draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. If you stay faithful to God, he'll stay faithful to you. If you don't reject God, he won't reject you. God love you. He will never leave you. Nor will God forsake you. All God wants us to do is to believe him. Trust him. Rely on him. Submit to him. And give ourselves to him. When we don't understand, just keep believing God. We want to give up, keep believing God. When we want to walk away, keep believing God. He love us. He want to be, God want to be our provider. He want to provide for us. Allow God to come in today and be your source. And be your supplier. Trust God. Believe God. He'll never leave you. Nor forsake you. And who was it who rebelled against God? Even though they heard his voice. He talking about the Israelite. He talking about the 21st century church now. We hear God's voice. And we still harden our heart against it. And we still reject God. And we still turn away from God. But God will never leave us. He's patient with us. 
He was patient for 40 years in the wilderness with the Israelites. And he's still patient now in the 21st century. He, he given us a chance to get it right. He's so patient, he given us a chance. He don't want to leave no one behind. Can we hear his voice today through me? Harden up your heart. Please come to Jesus. Please turn away from evil. Please stop doubting God. Please stop complaining to God. Please stop tearing his name up. Let God take care of you and provide for you. Wasn't it the people Moses laid out of Egypt? Verse 17. And who made God angry for 40 years? Wasn't, wasn't it the people who sinned? Whose corpus laid in the wilderness? And to whom, and to whom was God speaking when he took an oath that they would never enter his rest? You can't enter the rest of God if you doubt God. You can't enter the rest of God with an unbelieving heart. You can't enter God's rest complaining and worrying yourself to death and stressing yourself out. You can't enter God's rest like that. He waits on people today to enter his rest. So we see that because of their unbelief, verse 19, they were not able to enter his rest. You cannot enter God's rest with unbelief, with doubting God, with a double mind. One day you believe God. The next day you don't believe God. But the next day you believe God. Oh, God will do it for me. Then you'll come back again. Now you're worried. Now you're stressed. How am I going to pay my bills? I don't even have a job anymore. I will furlough. I will fire. God already know. He is the living God. He never sleep. He never slumber. He is the living God. He know all your needs. And he will supply all your needs. If you never turn away from God and your heart don't become unbelieving and, and you soften your heart up and don't harden your heart against the living God. Let's move on into this race. Hebrew chapter 4 verse 1 NLT God promised of enemy his rest Still stands. God promised the 21st century church entering his rest still stands. So we ought to tremble with fear that some of you might fail to experience it. I tremble with fear. Pray that you don't fail to enter God's rest. I am teaching today with the help of the Holy Spirit to teach you how to enter God's rest in the 21st century. It still stands. It still stands today. We all have an opportunity to come to God and believe God and His Word. It his word won't return void. It will prosper wherever it goes. Please, church, hear me. Please, church, hear me. Let's enter God rest. God is still walking. He created the world. Then on the seventh day, he entered into his rest. But he's still walking. He waiting on the church to respond to him. 
He with no people to respond to him. When you gonna to respond to God, to God's word? When you gonna say, you know, today, I believe you, God. Today, God, I won't be double-minded in all my ways. God, I will enter this rest today. I won't turn away. I won't hide my heart. It may look like you're not winning. It may look like you buried six feet under. It may look like that nothing ain't going your way. But God is telling you today, through my voice, come to me today and enter into my rest. Verse 2, for this good news that God has prepared this rest has, has been announced to us just as it was to them, the Israelites. They have been slavery for over, four, uh, for over 400 years. He used Moses to lead them out. Then they got in the wilderness. On a three-day journey, I love to say a three-day journey, but they made it a forty-year journey because they got their heart hard against God, and evil overtook their heart, and their heart became unbelieving. So they start complaining, and they start murmuring. And they got violent. And they started doing all type of things in the wilderness that God wasn't pleased with. The same thing happening in the 21st century church. We come to church week in and week out. And we hear the word of God. The Israelites heard the word of God. They heard it first. In the book of James, chapter 1, he said, Be a hearer of the word and a doer of the word. But we hear the word, but we are not doers of the word. But when you hear the word and you do the word, and you respond to the word, then your life change. And then you prosper. And then you multiply on the earth. He looking for some bold saints to be healed and do of the word. When you hear the word and you don't do the word, you deceive your own self. You make your life stressful. When you don't do the word, when you don't respond to the word. When you don't respond to the word, when you don't walk by faith, you deceive yourself. When you focus on what's going on in this economy, you deceive yourself. When you're so focused and tuned on it and looking for somebody to take care of you besides God, you're deceiving yourself. The Almighty God will take care of you. He on a cattle on a thousand hill. The world is here. The earth is here. And everything in it is God. He is Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Nisi. He is your provider. He is your victory. Trust in the Lord with all your heart today. And believe and lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge God. He will direct your path. Your path.
verse 3. For all of we who believe can enter his rest. You got to believe the word of God. You got to believe God would do it. When you believe God and his word, you can't enter God rest. What is God rest? Believe in him. That it's already done. Don't flip flop. Go forward. Don't matter how it look, how, how it may look. Keep pressing on towards this mark. Keep believing God. You may be in God rest now. Dealing with an illness or a sickness. But God is still there. If you believe him, I hear your Holy Spirit. Somebody is dealing with apparatus. In their knees. And God is believing. You be believing God to heal you. He says, stay in this rest. Arthritis in their shoulders, in their joints. God is healing you now. No more arthritis in your body. Respond to it with a praise. Re respond to it with a praise. You are completely healed. Get up now. Squat. Move your shoulders left and right. Kick your legs out. Respond to your healing. Respond to the word of God. God is looking for people who are going to believe him and believe his men and women of God in this 21st century. He's looking for people who are on fire and not lukewarm. You should be tired of being lukewarm. It's, it's time to get on fire now. It's time to walk into this world and bring souls to God. Bring the lost back to the kingdom of God. Bring them back home to the kingdom of God. It's time, saints, to get up out this seat. Stop complaining. Get in your rest and believe God to heal you. Believe God to provide, to provide for you. Believe God to protect you through this pandemic. Believe God. Believe God and his word. It won't return void. This word will prosper wherever it goes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. For all of we who believe, for all of we who believe can enter his rest. As for the others, God said, in my anger, in my anger, I took an oath. They will never enter my rest, my place of rest. Even though this rest has been ready since, the, since he made the world. It was there when he made the world. Ain't nothing changed. Ain't nothing new under the sun. He looking for believers. He looking for bold believers. He looking for believers with the world, with the sinners look at you. If they don't know what you're going through, who that Jesus you calling? Your lights off. Who that Jesus you calling? You don't even have, you don't even have a car. Who that Jesus you still believe in? You don't even have a job. Who that Jesus you believe in? You're in the homeless shelter. Who that Jesus you believe in? I'm gonna believe him because I'm in my rest. I didn't understand what rest was, but now I got some clarity of it. And I believe in my God to bring me out of this mess. And I'm trusting my God to take care of me. Why you keep going to church serving this God? There ain't nothing got better in your life yet. 
But I learned today, if I respond to God, I learned today, if I enter his rest with belief, I learned today if I walk by faith and not by sight, I don't care how long it may take, but I'm going to stay there in this rest. I don't care what they say about me, but I'm going to stay in this rest. I'm going to call him in the morning. I'm going to call him in the evening. I'm going to call him at nighttime. I'm going to call him in the midnight hours. I'm going to call him early, early in the morning. Because there ain't nothing going to pull me out of this rest. Because I know my Jesus, he will supply all my needs. You may not understand. I may not have nothing now. But you watch what my Jesus is going to do. My Jesus is going to take care of me. My Jesus is going to show his glory. My Jesus is going to show up and show out. While I'm in my rest. Because I ain't coming out of this rest. I'm staying in this rest. Because I know and I know. And I know that I'm coming out of it with a shout. I'm coming out of it with a praise. I'm coming out of it with a testimony. And I know, God, my God, my God, my God, my God. And I know that I, that I will live in a land of more than enough. And I know he will bring me out of poverty. And take me over to Goshen. And I know that my God won't fail me. And I know he will never forsake me. And I know my God. You may not know. But I know. He did it for me. He'll do it for you. I know. When I got on my own. I didn't have any money. I had a one bedroom apartment. And I didn't even know I was going to pay the rent sometime. I was working part time on my job. And my God took care of me. My God took care of me. I stopped believing God that He's going to bring me out. I believe God. That he's going to put me in the land of more than enough. I believe God. That he's going to give me a home. I believe God. He will pay it off. In 11 years that he did. I believe God. That he'll make me debt free. And I believe God. That he'll take care of me. And my family. I believe God. I got into God rest. And I, 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 I didn't come out of God rest. I stayed there. I stayed there. And I stayed there. And I stayed there. And God showed up. And he showed his glory. He brought me out. And he restored me. He restored me. And he gave me wisdom. How to use my money. He gave me wisdom. What to do with my money. Because I waited on God while I was in my rest. Looked like I was losing on every end. Looked like I was failing on every end. But God showed up. And he showed up in my life. And he blessed me. And I'm still blessed. I ain't bragging, but I'm blessed. I'm healthy. I'm prosperous. And I'm debt free. And I'm blessed. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. Lord, I praise you, Jesus. Lord, I give you glory for it, Jesus. In your mighty and holy name, Jesus. Don't tell me God ain't good. He don't prove himself to me. Don't tell me what God won't do. When it look like you're failing. When it, when it look like you're defeated. Don't tell me what God won't do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. I'm just sitting here, Jesus. I just want to praise you for a minute, Jesus. I just want to give you glory for a minute, Jesus. I just want to thank you for a minute, Jesus. Oh, I love you, Jesus. 
You have been so wonderful to me, Jesus. You have been wonderful to me, Jesus. And I want the people of God to know who are watching. God will do the same for you. God love you. When it looked like everything was gone, when it looked like I was down for a knockout, I got on my knees and I praised, to Je and I praised Jesus. And I start calling on the name of Jesus. And I made a request to Jesus. And I told Jesus, and I told Jesus, I got bold where I want to be at. I told Jesus I want to be debt free. I told Jesus I want a new house from the ground up. And I told Jesus I want to pay 30 years for it. I told Jesus I never want to be in debt again. I never want to be broke again in my life. And I start professing this thing, confessing this thing. I'll never be broke again in my life. I'll never be in debt again in my life. I live in a land of more than enough. I have a home, I own a home. Everything I get, I own. And my God, he showed up and he showed out because I never came out of my rest. I wasn't even right yet, but I was in my rest. I was raised in church, and I knew, and, and, but I didn't understand a lot of things. But when God called me, he anointed me, and he gave me wisdom, knowledge and understanding to teach his words. He said, I never want you to teach with any notes or any script. You just read the word. Me, you, and the Holy Ghost will do it. <laughs> I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As I come to the end of this message, today we'll pick up next week. We'll pick up next week. Dealing with resting in God. Let's get our offering. Listen to me, church. Listen to me, church. Sunday is Passover Sunday. I mean, Sunday is uh, Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost means 50. I normally teach on it, but I ain't teach on it this year. Let's get, let's get a $50 seed. Let's get a $50 seed, church. Let's get a $50 seed and celebrate Pentecost. God got three feasts a year. You got feast of Pentecost, you got feast of Passover, and you got a feast of the tabernacle. It's seven feasts and all these three feasts. And God say, don't appear before me empty. This is my feast. This is my celebration. Let's say God a fit of see for the feast of P Pentecost, the day He released the Holy Spirit to the church. It's the church. It's the Holy Spirit birthday. <laughs> the day He released the Holy Spirit to the church. Peter was preaching. He was preaching. And 120 people got saved. And Peter kept on preaching. Then another three hours got saved. Come on, y'all. Let's celebrate God. Show him God how much we love him. By giving him a fifth of all the on tithe our tithes and offerings. Come on, church. Let's come out for God. We celebrate the 4th of July, don't we? We celebrate Mother Day, Father Day. We celebrate Valentine's Day. When are you going to start celebrating God, the one that created you? The one that saved you? The one that love you and never turn away from you. We be gonna start celebrating God feast, celebrating His day every year on Passover, early spring, every year, summer, and every year in the fall. We got three feasts. Come on, y'all, let's praise Him. Let's bless God. May the thirty-first is God feast. Get happy to give to God. Get excited. Let you get excited when you go buy your fireworks on the 4th of July and blow them up. Blow your money up with no return. You should be ashamed of yourself. It's good to have fun. There's it, nothing wrong with having fun. But we got to realize who our Savior is, who our Father is. There's nothing wrong with having fun. Let's get it, God. Three times a year. And Deuteronomy 16, 16, he tells it, don't appear before me empty. 
You got so many blessings in this. When you give to God, when you give to God so many blessings, how you give your long life, how you take care of you, how you prosper you, I mean, so on and so on. Let's get to God today. Let's get our feast. We do it every year at, at, at Exodus worship. We get to God every year during the feast time. And we ain't stopping now. Thank you, church. Thank you for giving. Thank you, whoever watching on social media. Social media are screaming live. Let's get to God. Let's get to God. Thank you. I'll see you next week. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.